Before I start, I just wanted to mention that uh, we did present this work at CTED, but it was actually presented by a colleague of mine called Chad Logan. But we both are working on this topic. Um, so yeah, now to your question. So uh, the classification based on biomarker measurements typically works in the sense that you take your measurement results and compare them to a pre-specified cutoff value. So now in clinical practice, these diagnostic measurements will be affected by different sources of variability. For example, simply by logic variation or small deviations in pre-analytical handling due to different lab personnel operating, or also simply by analytical differences due to different instruments that are being used in different labs. So now the clinical performance of your diagnostic test should not be affected by low levels of variability, meaning that one would expect that the classification results of a robust diagnostic test should be consistent when samples, for example, are remeasured at different sites or different days. And in our opinion, we think that's quite important to investigate which amount of variability is critical or can be tolerated by a diagnostic test as early as possible when developing a new product. So now in this um, sense, we are looking at cerebrospinal fluids and there are two biomarkers that are quite prominent in the field. One ratio is the P to I beta 42 ratio. The other one is the I beta 40 to 40 ratio. And it has often been shown in publications that the performance of these two biomarkers or the biomarker ratio is actually more or less equivalent when looking at um, concordance to a visual amyloid PET. But we think this is quite a nice comparison because even though these two biomarkers are very good and show a strong ability to classify subjects, it seems that they do tolerate measurement variability to a different extent. And this is essentially what we investigated in our small simulation study. So we compared these two biomarker ratios for their clinical robustness. In our approach, we used a predefined cutoff for both biomarker ratios and applied this cutoff or these two cutoffs to a data set that is affected by a certain amount of variation. And we actually, in this case, controlled this amount of variation. So we had an original data set and applied bias to our biomarker distributions and then quantified the changes in concordance with amyloid PET. Um, just a bit more background on the data we used. So we used the subcohort from BioFinder that consisted of 277 subjects that did have mild cognitive impairment. And I also wanted to say that the data we used uh, comes from batch measurements and all three biomarkers have been measured on the Roche Alexis platform. And as said before, both biomarkers are very good indicators of the amyloid PET status. And we could also see this in our data. So in the original data, actually the sensitivity and specificity values were uh, quite good for both biomarkers and even almost identical between the ratios. Um, but as said, it's bad, it was batch measured data. And this doesn't really reflect the clinical routine because in clinical routine, you will have, or essentially batch measure data naturally has way less um, bias and error than data you will have uh, in clinical routine. So for this case, we started adding bias to the single biomarkers. And uh, for the purpose of simplicity of this poster, we sort of just took the worst case scenario. So worst case scenario means that, for example, you would have plus 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 ten percent bias in uh, one biomarker, but minus ten percent bias in the other biomarker. And uh, we applied this to all our single biomarkers, then calculated the ratios, and then looked again at uh, the agreement measures. And here we could see that the P tau a beta forty two ratio showed a lot less change in agreement measures. So for example, sensitivity and specificity. And also the reclassification rate was much lower compared to a beta 40 to 40. And this uh, brings us to the conclusion that despite showing very similar performance in unbiased data, in clinical routine use, we do expect 
PTOW and Beta42 to show more, more robust uh, qualitative results compared to a Beta4240.